And uh, I'm one of these kinds of persons that my most favorite subject is to talk about the movement and what can be done now. My least favorite subject is to talk about myself. And it took me a long time to understand that people needed to know who you were, what you accomplished, so that they can figure out who they are and what they can accomplish in this period. And this is an extremely important thing, extremely important, because if you don't know who you are, if you don't know what you believe, if you don't give a damn or are indifferent to your circumstances, then you can never, you can never ever accomplish anything in life. I don't care what it is. I'm not asking you to be a revolutionary, or, or you I am asking you to be a revolutionary. <laughs> but I'm not saying that you have to be a revolutionary to accomplish anything in life. But you have to be a committed, assertive person at the very least. And when it comes to, uh, so when it comes to my life circumstances, it isn't a question that I was some singular hero. Uh, I was not. I was part of a uh, mass movement that came uh, alive at a certain historical moment and, and that changed the world. Didn't ask it to change the world. Changed the world. Because if you are about social change, you don't ask for permission. Nobody gives you permission to be free. You take freedom. And you take it at the cost of your life or the enemy's life. And it's important to understand that. So I am here today, and I'm thrilled to be here today. And part of the reason I'm thrilled to be here today, because to be quite honest, I'm supposed to be dead. I'm supposed to, if not dead, in prison serving a life sentence. Well, actually, according to them, two life sentences. Plus 35 years for all the evil they put it. I did to the white power structure of America and other places. Well, let me start this off by saying that I am from a small town in the uh, southern United States. It's called Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's uh, southeastern uh, southern United States, close to Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, I'm someone who, <clears throat> at a very early age, <clears throat> sorry, at a very early age became an activist and ultimately a revolutionary. And I'll explain to you what I mean. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. My brother. And um, in the 1950s, when I was a kid, I mean really a kid, you could be murdered. If you were black, you could be murdered many were for attempting to vote, for speaking up, looking white folks in the eye, any kind of minor, minor uh, violation, as they call it. You could be murdered for that. Uh, and people were murdered. You lived under a form of terrorism, state terrorism, where, and this terrorism was governed and it was protected by white supremacy and the Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan is the oldest fascist organization in the world. In fact, it's the oldest fascist organization in world history. Uh, it started at the end of the American Civil War with the southern white plantation owners, and this is in, and we're talking about in the 1880s, 1870s in that area the southern plantation owners and the southern parts of the region that, that um, compelled slavery were defeated in combat. And, uh, and their homes were destroyed and their, their crops and their mansions and all of this were taken or destroyed completely. And they had nothing. And uh, in retaliation, they created a secret army organization a terrorist, a white terrorist organization. And uh, the so-called freedmen, the black so-called slaves that had gotten their freedom as a result of this, this war, there were over, 
over 100,000 Union troops that were, uh, that were Africans, that were of African descent. And they were the decisive force to destroy the Confederacy. And the Confederacy, as I said, was based on slavery, and it was a type of economy, uh, an, what they call an agrarian economy, as opposed to the northern states, which was an industrial economy. And so the, the, even though the war was about the question of slavery, underneath it was the question and the issue of the economic mode of production. And so uh, this war, which went on from 1865, resulted in the complete and utter destruction of the Confederacy. But the reality was that the, even the North which would call itself, you know, fighting for the Union, the, you know, and so forth, which won, and the, and the Confederacy was defeated. They made a deal with their once hated rivals, and they allowed, they took the Union troops out of the South, where they had occupied the area, and they allowed the Ku Klux Klan to rise and to terrorize the black population. And they knew that this would happen. There were hundreds of people, even thousands of people killed by the Klan in the few months, few years after they did all this. And leading up to early to late 1980s, when finally they were destroyed. You know, they were destroyed by 